Welcome to the Rosanna Mod Variety Pod. This is your vessel and host, Rosanna Moluño, and here we go. Hey everybody, I hope you liked my intro. The intro was cut from like 38 seconds into 12 seconds. I haven't heard from anybody telling me that it's too long. I just kind of researched a little bit and found out that 10 seconds is sort of the go. And I search out on Google for the best podcast just to see. And the number one was, of course, Joe Rogan. And if you listen to his podcast in the very beginning, his intro, it's not even, I don't even think it's his voice. Somebody else is Joe Rogan, you know, like some electronic voice and some music a little bit. It must have been about maybe six or seven seconds. And then he just talks and he says, hey, everybody, well, welcome. We're here with whatever the guest is. And I thought, okay, you know what? Gets right to the point. I like that succinctness of the program saves people a lot of time so I thought I'm gonna do the same so let me cut it and make it shorter and that's what I did so anyway so today's show is Thursday love we're at episode 169 169 I wanted to talk about pets and how they fit into your relationships and can a cat person be with a dog person and if you have a dog and you meet somebody that's allergic to dogs, or if you meet somebody that's allergic to cats, how's that gonna work out? Do you get rid of the cat and keep the person? Or do you get rid of the person and keep the cat? That's what I would do. I don't have a cat anymore, though I used to, my lovely Chewy. And that's a sad story. I don't wanna talk about that because it's gonna make me sad. But I have a dog now, and I can't imagine meeting somebody perfect for me, finding out that the person doesn't like my dog, or is allergic to my dog, which is even worse, or, Maybe says, I don't like little dogs. Or maybe, even worse, which is a thought I've had, is he has a big dog who doesn't like small dogs. How would that work? You would have to compromise, I think. Because if you have a relationship with a dog, you know, pet as a pet lover, your pets are part of your family. So that's not an option, you know, to get rid of the pet. But you can compromise in ways where I think, you know, separate the two like if you have two pets one doesn't like the other I guess you could separate them make sure that they're safe put one behind a you know a little fence area I think that there has to be some kind of a compromise where you can agree I don't know I've never had that problem and I don't even know anybody that has that problem I'd be curious if you have that problem what you've done to correct it or if you have any ideas or anything how did you work out with your pets You know, if you don't, uh, have you had that happen to you? Or do you even bother meeting someone and saying, oh, do you have a, oh, yes, I have a, I don't know, a a bull mastiff or something, and uh, he hates small dogs. Oh, I have a chihuahua. Oh, sorry. And then just not meet them at all. Just kind of scratch them off the list. Are they, is that a deal breaker before you even meet anybody? I I think it would be for me. I think if I, if I, initially would meet someone and they told me but what happens if you don't know that you know you kind of meet them or let's say you're with somebody and then all of a sudden they find a dog and they make it their dog and that dog just happens to hate you or (laughs) or hate your dog you've already established the relationship so that dog would be not fair to be in that relationship then I mean I don't say get rid of the dog I would say don't put up with it if you're the person that has the smaller dog this is a really crappy show. I'm not really sure that I like it too much. <laughs> I thought it was going to go like in a different way, but that's okay. That's what we do. We do things like that. We talk about crap that sometimes doesn't fit the narrative or sometimes doesn't go with what you're expecting. And that's normal because we're humans and human people are so full of surprises and craziness. And that's what makes a fun conversation, not to be prepared for what you're hearing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go online because I, like I told you, I don't prep for these. Sometimes I do, I'll admit, no. Sometimes that's a lie because if I have a list I have to write, I think I've told you that before, if I have a list then I have to go in and prep. But if I don't have a list and it's a topic that I've already been familiarized with from either personal experience or someone else told me about it, then maybe I wouldn't. So when your partner hates your dog, should I get married to a man with dog that hates my cats? Well, see, she already knows that he's got a, they've already met and they've already know what they have and what they hate. How to make your partner like cats if they don't? I don't know about that. If your partner hates them, see, I broke up with my boyfriend because he hated my pet. There we go. 
Let's see. Uh, what do you do when your partner wants to get rid of your cat? Oh my God. Uh, the struggle of dating an animal lover when you hate pets. Well, how, why would you even meet somebody that hates pets? That's my question. How does it even get to that point? Right? He has cats. I hate cats. How can we live together? Well, he loves cats and, and you hate them. I mean, wouldn't that, that's kind of like a, a, a deal breaker, I think, for me going out with somebody that hates dogs and I have a dog. I mean, why is that even a question? Why is that? Why are we even talking about that? Here, when pets come between partners, that's exactly what I wanted to say. Can pets ruin a relationship? Some experts say it's becoming more common for couples to bicker over pets. And in some cases, these pet peeves can lead to separation or even divorce. Look at that. But at least one psychologist says fights about Pets could be ma masking deeper relationship issues. Exactly what I was thinking. It would mask a deeper relationship issue, does it not? That you don't know how to compromise or you can't flex, you're inflexible, or that maybe you're selfish, or, or that maybe you are unable to share or unable to compromise yeah which means you're stubborn if I'm digging I, I haven't read his article I'm just this is just out of the top of my head so that wouldn't that make sense uh, let me see this one this one is psychological defenses and let's see what they say let me see if they agree with me what I just said displacement is an unconscious psychological defense let's see this is psychological defenses when pets come between partners it's at tap tapinfinity.com and it's written by who wrote this Val Silver but I guess she's the one that the person that talked about this displacement it says it's Dr. Gold slightly different meaning of displacement than the traditional meaning for the purposes of the book displacement happens when a person transfers past feelings and experiences onto somebody else this person relates to the pet as if he or she were that person from the past. I never would have really thought about that as a reason, but I guess in a way that makes sense. So a negative association is based on an unresolved issue with a person. So your boyfriend's dog might remind you of your selfish, haughty mother. And the innocent pet stirs up unconscious feelings and memories which interfere with your ability to have a genuine relationship with the pet. Those are for people that don't accept the pets. So that's weird, right? And then over here it says projection or displacement, two case studies. It's a little long. I'm not going to read all that, but it does make sense. So I understand that. But I think that, oh, look at this one. It says Ted began kicking his girlfriend's male poodle, even though he had never abused an animal before. He was jealous of Homer and claimed he couldn't stand how the dog wiggled his behind. He said Homer was contemptuous, demanding, and effeminate. He issued the ultimatum, it's mere the dog. So Sally opted for therapy, and Ted worked through important insights, revealing himself, blah, 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 blah. Displacement does make sense to me. So maybe the dog reminds you of somebody, but I don't know if that's true. Why, if you're a pet lover and you love dogs, and you meet this perfect person with a dog who doesn't like you? That wouldn't really be displacement. That would just be the dog hates your guts and, and, or maybe he's just got a crappy attitude. I mean, not all dogs are, are fun and great. Some of them are jerks. Maybe the dog is jealous too. Some, some of them are very possessive of their owners and they don't like uh, you having a partner. They're used to living with you all the time and here you come and ruin the, their, your perf their perfect uh, relationship. You're the third person and that maybe they'll poop in your shoe or something, or they'll pee on your, or your side of the bed, even worse. That can happen. You've been living with one pet for a long time, and then you're introducing somebody else into your life, then you're left with the decision of, this is the perfect person for me, but my dog won't accept you. I think that maybe you should call um, that, that famous dog doctor into play, Caesar. Why if the dog is older? then I think you should be patient and you should say, you know what, the dog is older. I love my partner and I'm going to have to deal with it and just try and do your best to deal with it because it's an issue. Could, doesn't and, and you know what I was thinking is it doesn't have to be a dog. Why if it's a kid? What are you going to do just get rid of the kid? Because technically pets are our family. So let's say you meet somebody who's got a kid who hates your guts. I know that that's happened or you hate the kid. Well, what are you going to do? Are you going to break up because you don't like his kid? 
or are you going to just find a way to deal with it? I guess you would have to find a way to deal with it. I don't have the solutions to this. The only solution I could think of is therapy or some kind of training for the dog or the cat and separation, like maybe find a way to, you don't have to lock them away all the time, but you can find like hours or something where, you know, animals are pretty smart. You know, look, if you're not going to get along with him, then I'm going to put you over here. Okay. And you're, you're going to stay over there unless you behave and then watch TV and hang out with your partner and let the dog look at you and cry. And that's sad. (laughs) And then, um, say like, this is our TV watching time. So this is the time that you go over here behind this little caged in area, not a cage, but like you block off the area and you say, okay, you can stay over here because we're going to watch a movie and you're going to sit there and watch a movie or have dinner or whatever that you do and then let him out so that he knows when the TV goes on or this is your quiet time. This is the time that you have to relax and chill out and be quiet and be a good boy, be a good girl. You see, I think that that would make more sense. That, that does make sense to me. Okay. Well, on that note, if you liked my intro, you're going to like my outro because my outro is, what is it with this accent? I just can't even stand it. Thanks for stopping in. Don't forget to like, share and comment and I'll talk to you soon. God bless you. And what do we say? Ciao.